Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this week's studio visit. I am Danielle Deigert here with Art Center Sarasota, and today I get the special privilege of talking to Lori Marie Jenkins. Thank you, Lori. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. Lori's coming to us from California, so it's daytime over there. It's still the evening here, but we've got rainy days. So thanks for making the time for us. Um, Lori is going to be absolutely yeah she's going to be teaching one of our classes um, as a visiting artist so we do pride ourselves in from bringing in the best all over the country for you all so Lori's class will be in November sorry it's a workshop in November I will post that in this comment section um, after we finish our video up today but of course you can find that on our website um, but what I'm really interested in is you, Laurie Marie, you know, kind of how you've begun <laughs> um, about your work and we'll, we'll get into some of that. But I'd love for you to introduce yourself and kind of talk about how you got into art and art making and, and why you're choosing it as your vocation. Okay. Um, my name is Laurie Marie and I am a mixed media artist here in Vallejo, California. And thank you, Danielle, for this invitation. This is so exciting. I mean, we got Facebook going, we got Zoom going. It's just uh, really a thrill. So thank you, everyone, for joining in. Um, you know, I was a late bloomer in the art world, uh, in the art world. Uh, I was busy raising kids, and I did hair, and I was a chef, and I had a catering company, and, you know, I had many, many things that... Uh, were playful in my life. And then uh, then I met Rob. I met Rob about 21 years ago. Rob is a schooled artist. He has a master's in glass. And he does mixed media. And it is some edgy stuff. And I was raised in Detroit. And the only kind of art that was art was fine art. You went to the museums and you saw the oil paintings. And, you know, people would ooh and ah. And I didn't get it. And, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, you know, artists, check. Can't be that. You know, let's move on to the next thing. And uh, But when I saw Rob's work, and he inter introduced me to kind of a lowbrow art world. I mean, I literally said, hmm, if that's art, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how it began. I began with very heavy, it's always been found objects. Um, uh, being a, uh, being an artist on a low budget, uh, just starting off and not even knowing what direction I was taking. Uh, I was given some torso, uh, mannequin torsos, and found a beach where they were dis that were uh, at one time there was a dish diner company, diner dish company, and they would throw the uh, flawed ones into the bay, and so all of these uh, cups and handles and saucers and everything like that had rolled up onto the beach, and they were all you know, like beach glass, they were all turned and smooth and things like that. So uh, one of the very first pieces that I made was called Love Handles, and it was the male torso uh, made with cup handles. And um, uh, super heavy, and I believe uh, he lives in San Ramon now. Uh, he sold practically immediately. I've never had any trouble selling my art for some reason, so that's kind of crazy. But uh, I'm challenged by finding something and then creating with that something. So, okay. you know, that's that's how I kind of started. I found some mannequin legs and covered them with marbles. And, you know, I mean, it just, whatever comes across my path. What I found very quickly is that those mosaic, mosaics are very heavy and nearly impossible to move around. So right. <laughs> it, was a, it was a matter of finding a much lighter medium to work with. So eventually I worked, um, my mixed media just on paper or wood or things like that. And then uh, when I started being able to travel and teach, it was easier to have a book uh, because I could have the examples right in the book, in the altered book and carry that and influence people with the actual book. So that's how the evolution started from something very, very heavy that was practically immovable to something I can literally carry on the plane with me. So that happened and as far as vocation you know it's so funny because I don't consider it 
a job. Good. Yeah. Can you, I mean, it's a great feeling. Can, you know, it was so cute because, you know, you had sent me a preview of some of the questions and I briefly went over them, but the word vocation stuck out and I'm like, oh, oh my God, it's supposed to be a job. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's kind of interesting that it, I still don't consider it a job. It's a true joy it's a true joy that's fantastic yeah. and how long how long in general do you think you've been doing the altered books like how long do you think that happened okay the books oh goodness i think the books went hand in hand with uh youtube uh so i would say probably and i'm no good at this but uh three to four years ago is when i probably started really delving into the altered books okay yeah yeah. Great. Fantastic. Um, and that was trial and error. The books were? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, 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 you know, part of these questions I have is, is about your style and where do you get your materials, but is it all organic? I mean, if you're influenced by the material, are you just mixing and matching in the studio? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's happening. Um, <clears throat> when I say that it was, uh, I learned by experience. Uh, it's not like I had somebody that went before me and said, okay, these are the mistakes you don't want to make. And these are the strong points that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any of that. Um, I can, I, I'm an outsider artist. I am not trained in anything. Um, although I've taken classes from artists, I have done that. But as far as, you know, any training, uh, it's OJT on the job as I learned. Oh, and it was uh, learning what books were strong and what books were weak, which pages could handle it, which could not. And then um, I, tr I don't buy a lot of supplies. That's not part of my story. I use a lot of, uh, of what I have, what's been given to me. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I suppose this, question yeah, that. no, I mean, it, it leads into my next question about narrative uh, and, um, and what your, you're, are you creating a narrative as you work? Are you thinking of that in the process? Does that evolve as you go? Because there's a lot of symbolism in your work too. I mean, even just looking at the broken hearts that have been sewn back together and those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, talk on kind of narrative maybe. Okay, so when I first started uh, making the altered books, it was a venue to expose those techniques on YouTube. So each page carried a different technique. Uh, each page, two page spread carried its own complete story, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then as I made more and more books, it became evident that there was a story from start to finish. And that's more of a challenge um, to have the story go from cover to cover. I enjoy it. Uh, it is a thread that carries from page to page. So, you know, you have to keep in mind what's going on a little bit more. I tend to start in the middle of a book and work out toward the end. So that was something that happened, uh, had to change a little bit so that I could start at the beginning and tell a story through. Um, my latest book that has a theme, I did a Frida book, which was amazing. So Frida's an easy thing. You know, you just slap her on every page and she's amazing. <clears throat> and um, I had a, my it, latest. Is the new book ahead. on your website? Uh, probably not okay. because I'm not really good at that. Can I, can I hire you? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. But I want to give people, you know, kind of some context for your work too, as you talk about it. So tell us about that. I'm going to screen share and we'll just flash through some okay. of the things on your website there too. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Well, I want to, I'm, I'm, pub I have a book published in, um, the journaling magazine. I have the magazine here oh, okay, and great. I thought maybe I would show that. Now this was a theme book. Oh, where are we? <laughs> Do I have the right one? Uh, this was a theme book. It was called uh, Searching for the Fairy or something like that. Oh my goodness. I should have marked it. Welcome to my world. <laughs> okay. Welcome well, I'm going to share the book. screen so we can look at some okay. of the work online and then, um, okay. And then we will, venture back to that. Okay. All right. All that right. sounds great. Okay. So here is Lori Marie's website. Oh, it's loading. Give it a moment. Okay. Can you see that Lori Marie on your screen? 
Why, yes, I can. There you go. You see yourself. <laughs> so this is just the, the bio for your page, but let's go to some of your artwork. Let's see. So these are some examples of the mixed media. All right, Laura Marie, if you could just talk about maybe this piece real quick, since I've got it up for yeah. everyone. So this is, uh huh, this is actually done on um, watercolor paper, and uh, what I have to say is I really let the art speak for itself. I, I never know where it's going to take me or where it's going to take itself. I always start with a very involved um, background, layers mm -hmm. and layers and layers. I, my first layer is uh, called underpants. And um, I came up with that term because I always, in teaching, I always had uh, the students put down a layer of torn um, pages. Okay. And they'd be like, oh, why do we have to do that? We have to do that every week. Why do we have to do that? And I said, because the underpants are very important to the outfit, but not everyone gets to see them. <laughs> and it's like the foundation. You know, it, um, it starts the energy flowing into the piece. It starts a bonding process. Oh, I love that piece. Um, it starts a bonding process with the, with the piece. You know, it's centering with the piece. You know, so the, the uh, underpants become a very, very important part of the, uh, the layering process, although some of them don't ever even show. You know, they might be covered up with other colorful pieces. And so I'm still flipping. I may have the wrong magazine, which is weird. Okay, I'm filtering yeah. through some of know. your series here. Ooh, I saw this work okay. too, these kind of oh. dress houses. Oh. So the dresses, these are ultimately my favorite um <clears throat> they do each tell a story those are let me get a little sip here <clears throat> those are actually <clears throat> uh baby dresses from maybe the 20s and wow. 30s and 40s they're very very fragile some of them come to me and they're already torn here again these are gifts these are these are baby dresses that people are like, I found these in my grandma's thing and I don't know what to do with them. Do you know what to do with them? And it's like, of course I do. So uh, this particular one that we're looking at right now is called New Beginnings. And it actually has real quail eggs in the center. Those are from my dad's house from an abandoned quail nest. Wow. <clears throat> the little, uh, oh, and the, um, f the frame of the frame that the uh, dress is on is a topiary frame. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody was tossing out a topiary frame and the nest uh, is an actual real nest, you know, and so, and I dip the dresses in, in beeswax. So that's what makes it stable. That's what gives it its form. So wow. I have a frying pan and uh, electric frying pan. I have it on about 350. I take the dress, I smush it down into the beeswax. I bring it up, I've got chopsticks in the sleeves, and then I have a certain amount of time that I can manipulate the fabric and put uh, wrinkles back into it, pleats back into it. Wow. So. No, it's, yeah. got, it's got do, a great do you form. Have a, it's, all right, let me see. What else do we have? Do we have the other dresses there, Danielle? Uh, I we have, have one with um, bottles, little bottles on it. I don't see that one no. here. I see American Dream and Stay okay, Connected. Okay. Um, I just made the other one. Okay, the spot. okay. So that's all right. Uh, staying connected is. Um, oh, go to the vintage dress series. It might not. It may not be there. There's only a certain amount on there, but the um, staying connected. Mm -hmm. If you look at how it is connected to the wall, that is an old operator headpiece. Like when they were on the keyboards doing all the operator thing. Yes, it is. That's what that is. And so Rob being, Rob's also a carpenter and a furniture builder. So he helps me with the installation of some of these things. Mm -hmm. And this is a bunch of, you just tell me if I'm talking too much, okay? Well, I think I, I have a question as to where these, maybe the photographs are coming from. Are, are these personal? Okay, okay. Are these found? Yeah. What? All right, so um, can we zero in on that a little bit? Probably a little mm -hmm. blurry, but photos. That's all right. Uh, 
Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> these are, uh, they could be original little photos or they are uh, laser print copies of little photos. And I have put them in tea bags and dipped them in beeswax and then sewed them on the dress. And you can see all the strings hanging from the uh, from the tea bag. So, all right, should I show a little something something or just keep on chatting? Yeah, I mean, if you've got work in progress, I'm sure we'd love to see it. Let's see. Um, so I think let's transition into kind of the books and why you teach the books and kind of if there's any theory behind that, behind the windows and the tags. And I know we talk about materials, but do, do those fall into a narrative that you kind of encourage? Is it is that something you just let the students take on themselves? Well, there again, when I teach the books, it's like having a dozen mini canvases at our at our very fingertips. So um, when I'm going to say an artist, and that's who I have at the table with me. I have many, many artists at the table with me. And when an artist sits down with a book, it is automatic that their story is going to come out. Their palette is going to come out. Their favorite things are going to come out. So I wouldn't say until just recently when I started being definitely thematic, but prior to that, it was just like, just playing okay you know what is the challenge here oh my gosh the challenge is getting something to move uh, what is the challenge here? getting something to pop out what is the challenge here making a window a door you know it's just like okay how can how can i challenge myself and then pass that on so i think it's more that than um teaching them how to create a a journal you know a book it's mm -hmm. more technique related yeah do you have any work in progress that you wanted to I do. I Great. do. Uh, and, and you've probably seen a lot of it. So, um, so this is a book I started in when I was in New Zealand this last time. Rob and I were in New Zealand. We uh, taught in Christchurch, uh, a four and a half day workshop there. It was our second time in New Zealand. Love it there. And uh, um, just a few weeks prior to going to New Zealand, my uh, youngest son passed away. I was done with the class. I was with my feelings. So um, I hope my internet hangs on here. And so uh, being present at that workshop allowed me to not feel for a little while and then when i was by myself i started to feel and uh i i my art speaks for itself i never know where it's going to take me um and so this this has been an amazing journey and as i go through the pages you will see the um the process the process of being in a dark hole to becoming oh my gosh so um are you okay with that, Daniel? Does yeah, it feel too dark? Yeah. No, I, I think that's great. I it's mean, okay. it's, it's you. It's your journey. It's what you brought brought you here. So I think it's great. Okay. All right. So uh, this is called an empty chair. I actually made this while I was in Arizona. I mean, in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, this one says, a long journey in search of. So there's a young man there. He had a, a, a fiance. Okay. And she, you know, is without her fiance now. And so that's what that's about. And look at the crackle. That's a stamp. Can you see the crackle? Yeah. That's an actual stamp. Delicious. <laughs> so yum, yum. <laughs> I actually, uh, I make these pages so I can tear them out and frame them. Uh, I actually sold a piece out of this book, which is pretty cool. Somebody fell in love with it. Uh, I am not done talking about him. That's that page. Mm -hmm. oh, there's they look pretty good. They look pretty good on screen. They do. Uh, and this one is, <laughs> I've uh, given birth to five boys and two of them have passed. So this is the representation of that. Wow. Uh, the backgrounds are what take the time. You know, I spend a lot of time 
fun time, play time, building the backgrounds, and then the focal point focal points are just like the cherry. You know, it's just mm -hmm. like okay, you know, what's how do, how do I end this? Um, they're again becoming brave. Oh, there's five stocks and three hearts representing the five and three left behind. Um, my world is upside down. This is my village. See the backgrounds are just so delish. Mm -hmm. This is a transfer so you can actually see the background through her. Um, but I have relied, I call my YouTube people and my Facebook people, I call them my village. And so this is Great. my village and my village has always been there for me. They have been unbelievable, unbelievable. I know you have a lot more questions. There's my grief, biggest daylight, sun background. This one is uh, crumbling. You can see this, the process is mm -hmm. still happening. How long do you think oh, it see, takes now, you now we're starting on each to make... of these pages? About a, about a day. Okay. If I had a day in my studio, I could do it in a day, but uh, I have my dad here, so I get five minutes here and five minutes there. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here things are starting to look up a little bit, and the elastic heart is stronger. You know, so you can take that broken heart and you can put it back together with elastic so that it stretches and holds everything and everybody that you need to. Do not try this alone. There's the village again. Don't try this alone. Don't why try don't anything you, alone. Lori, Marie, why don't you talk a little bit about one your more page? YouTube. Okay. This is it. Okay. And this is the last one. And That's it says, it. how am I supposed to feel? Which, so, okay. What do you want me to talk about? Well, your village, actually. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So explain to everyone. I think that this is a really great kind of space for advice, too, for any artist who might be interested. Um, so both kind of your story and advice that you've got from along the way from teaching online. Okay. So um, I would suggest, well, for me, mm -hmm. okay, for me, when, when I started making art, it became a parent very quickly that it was way too big for me to keep to myself. It was way too huge. So I started teaching right out of the gate. As soon as I tried something, I wanted to teach somebody else. So that is how that started. And um, I did brick and mortar on site uh, classes for a few years. And then, um, you know, life moves on and it's like, okay, well, how else can I do this? Oh, YouTube. Oh, well, that's a challenge. Let's try that. And uh, and I was begging for people to subscribe. I can remember, you know, because you have to have a certain amount of uh, subscribers before you can monetize and start to make money and this, that, and the other thing. So what I can tell you is if you are relying on YouTube for your income, then you better have a small amount of money needed because it takes a while to build it up. It <laughs> really does. Okay. I think my, yeah, it really does. I, I think my first check was like $35 and it's like, what the heck? <laughs> anyway, that was a stepping stone. That was a building brick for the many things that were to come after that. Mm -hmm. And um, I, the YouTube channel uh, is now almost 26,000 people. Wow. Um, it's yeah i know Congrats. and i know so many of these people personally you know i just well i mean it's amazing it's, that's kind of ahead. your connection to the art center is one of your youtube followers also yes, teaches with us it and, is. and really that's just right. kind of loved you as a person as an artist and really wanted you to share what you have so great so keep going yeah <laughs> Okay, and that is how my um, my international workshops have come about too. Because somebody in the village said, "Would you ever come to Australia?" And I said, "Yeah, you get twelve people <laughs> together, and I'm there, you know." And so she did, and I did, and we did, and you know, I've been able to travel in many, many places. There's upcoming workshops, as you know, and all it's unbelievable. So anyway, so YouTube feeds that teaching for me. Mm -hmm. it, te it, it goes hand in hand with that. I spend a lot of time on my comments. I try to respond to every single comment that comes in. And some of my videos have close to 200 uh, comments. 
you know, and it's yeah. just like, I know these people. I recognize their names, you know. Some of them have, uh, like, a nickname for me. You know, I mean, it's just, it's a relationship with these people. So, all right, so then it's like, okay, well, I'm not really making much money on YouTube. I know. I'll go on Patreon. Mm -hmm. And so YouTube fed Patreon. These people that were getting free content uh, a, a video a week were interested in getting an extra video a week with instructions and focal points and things like that. So that built up very, very quickly for me. Uh, unfortunately, my dad moved in and not unfortunately, my dad moved in, but unfortunately, my life changed when my dad moved in in January. He requires 24 seven. And then Cameron passed in February and I had to close Patreon. I didn't have to close Patreon. I chose to close Patreon. And now I'm doing two free content videos a week on YouTube. It's less pressure for me mm -hmm. somehow. I don't know. It's just less. And, uh, but I'm still in touch with those people. We have a chat once a week with the Patreon people, Zoom. I have a chat once a week with the Facebook people on Zoom. You know, show me what you're doing. Set a goal with me. You know, oh, that's what you look like. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's so nurturing and so fulfilling. And, you know, it's just like they learn to be themselves through art. I'm just the vehicle. I'm just the one that says I'm okay with that. Right. The title of your workshop is, is totally indicative of that, right? Recovering your art for self. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. And so do you think um, you're going to continue to make work? Two videos a week, make work in your studio, teach? I mean, do you have plans for what's next in terms of your work? Do you want to work large on community projects? Who knows? Is there anything that you're thinking? Um. I'm very content with creating two videos a week. Okay. <laughs> I'm very content with uh, responding to all of the comments and I am very content with the workshops that I have coming back up. Now, I will probably teach weekly classes here locally when things are able to, to wake up and do those things again. I will probably do that because uh, I really enjoy that. I enjoy being with the students once a week. It's pretty magical. I mean, I'm learning as much as they are, absolutely learning as much as they are. So uh, I do enjoy having my work published. I've been published uh, in the Somerset magazines more times than I can count. I'm sorry I couldn't get my hands on it. Uh, you, I, it's on my website. That particular magazine is on my website uh, with little images of the book, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy sending my work away okay. and let somebody else store it for a little while. <laughs> And I encourage my students to do it too. It's like, if I can send this away, you can send yours away. Yeah, we did. Hi, Angie, um, the morning, morning book. Yep, I'm about halfway through with it. And uh, I'll keep you posted on the pages. I can see, I can see my own path through grief. Uh, what started this really was the word grief. Um, because people are saying, oh, are you in grief? Or are you grieving? Da, 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 da. And to me, it, it was a word that <clears throat> encompassed so many joy, sadness, tears, laughter, and darkness, light, you know, it's just like, oh, so I had to look it up. Mm -hmm. Just like I had to look up vocation, actually. <laughs> and uh, I wanted the real meaning of grief. And the real meaning of grief is deep sorrow. Deep sorrow. That's what grief is. And it's like, okay, well, I'm not in deep sorrow all the time. You know, I'm mourning mm -hmm. and I get up at dark o'clock. So it just made sense to do a morning, morning pages. And I'm not a writer, you know, I'm not a journaler in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in script. So Angie, I hope that touched on that for you. Thank yeah. you. And I think that speaks a lot to your visual language, right? <clears throat> I mean, you, you're not a writer, but you're still expressing yourself in each one of these pages every day or every couple of days, right? I mean, it's still you in the work. Yes. Well, fantastic. Lori Marie, do, is there anything that I didn't touch on that you wanted to just let everyone know? I, there are, there is maybe one thing okay. that I want to touch on. And um, like I say, I have the chats that I host uh, once a week. 
and they are through the different Facebook groups that I have. You can find them through our YouTube village on Facebook. Uh, but I want what I want to say is I always end my chats with a little bit of meditation. Okay. And I always start all of my classes with a little bit of meditation. And um, I encourage, I actually have a couple of podcasts out there on YouTube that kind of go over some things like that and self love and self awareness. And um, I just want to convey how important that is. You know, the time on the table is so precious. Please allow yourself to have some. You know, right now with my dad, I literally snag five minutes here while he's brushing his teeth, five minutes there while, you know, I'm warm in his soup. I mean, I literally am just grasping what I can. And, uh, and I encourage people to say, I have more than enough time to create. So, okay. I think I'm complete. I think that was a beautiful um, kind of end to this talk and for this time, you know, I'm sure there's still plenty of people at home who may have been home for a while and creating work, but it's always nice to hear it again to, uh, yeah. to spend the time on ourselves and doing what we love. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Lori Marie. Thank you to everyone who followed us on our Facebook Live. Um, this video will be on our website very soon. So if you've got anyone you want to show it to, let me know. Um, appreciate Great. all of your time, Lori Marie. And oh, my pleasure. Yeah, I'm excited to see you in November. Thank you so much.
New Zealand. Love it there. And, and uh, um, just a few weeks prior to going to New Zealand, my uh, youngest son passed away. I was done with the class. I was with my feelings. So um, I hope my internet hangs on here. And so uh, being present at that workshop allowed me to not feel for a little while. And then when I was by myself, I started to feel. And uh, I, I, my art speaks for itself. I never know where it's going to take me. Um, and so this, this has been an amazing journey. And as I go through the pages, you will see the, um, the process the process of being in a dark hole to becoming, oh my gosh. So um, are you okay with that, Daniel? Does it yeah, feel too dark? Yeah. No, I, I think that's great. It's I mean, okay. it's, it's you, it's your journey. It's what you brought, brought you here. So I think it's great. Okay. All right. So uh, this is called an empty chair. I actually made this while I was in Arizona. I mean, in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, this one says, a long journey in search of so there's a young man there. He had a a, a fiance, and okay. she, you know, is without her fiance now. And so that's what that's about. And look at the crackle. That's a stamp. Can you see the crackle? Yeah. That's an actual stamp. Delicious. <laughs> so yum yum. <laughs> I actually uh, I make these pages so I can tear them out and frame them. Uh, I actually sold a piece out of this book, which is pretty cool. Somebody fell in love right. with it. Uh, I am not done talking about him. That's that page. Mm -hmm. oh, they look pretty good. They look pretty good on screen. They do. Uh, and this one is, <laughs> I have uh, given birth to five boys and two of them have passed. So this is the representation of that. Wow. Uh, the backgrounds are what take the time. You know, I spend a lot of time, fun time, play time, building the backgrounds. And then the focal points, focal points are just like the cherry, you know, it's just mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, what, how do, how do I end this? Um, they're again, becoming brave. Oh, there's five stalks and three hearts representing the five and three left behind. Um, my world is upside down. This is my village. See the backgrounds are just so delish. Mm -hmm. This is a transfer so you can actually see the background through her. Um, but I have relied I call my YouTube people and my Facebook people, I call them my village. And so this is Great. my village and my village has always been there for me. They have been unbelievable. Unbelievable. I know you have a lot more questions. There's my grief, biggest daylight, fun background. This one is uh, crumbling. You can see this, the process is still mm -hmm. happening. How long do you think oh, it takes you on, on each of these pages? About a, about a day. Okay. If I had a day in my studio, I could do it in a day, but uh, I have my dad here, so I get five minutes here and five minutes there. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here things are starting to look up a little bit. An elastic heart is stronger, you know, so you can take that broken heart and you can put it back together with elastic so that it stretches mm -hmm. and holds everything and everybody that you need to. Do not try this alone. There's the village again. Don't try this alone. Don't try this alone. Lori, Marie, why don't you talk a little bit about I have one more Lori page? You. Okay. This is it. Okay. And this is the last one. And it okay. says, How am I supposed to feel? Which so okay. What do you want me to talk about? Well, your village, actually. <laughs> okay. Yes. Right. So, yeah. So explain to everyone, I think that this is a really great kind of space for advice to, for any artist who might be interested. Um, so both kind of your story and advice that you've got from along the way from teaching online. Okay. So, um, I would suggest, well, for me, okay, okay. for me, when, when I started making art, it became apparent very quickly that it was way too big for me to keep to myself. It was way too huge. So I started teaching right out of the gate. As soon as I tried something, I wanted to teach somebody else. So that is how that started. And um, I did 
brick and mortar on site uh, classes for a few years. And then, um, you know, life moves on and it's like, okay, well, how else can I do this? Oh, YouTube. Oh, well, that's a challenge. Let's try that. And, uh, and I was begging for people to subscribe. I can remember, you know, because you have to have a certain amount of uh, subscribers before you can monetize and start to make money and this, that, and the other thing. So what I can tell you is if you are relying on YouTube for your income, then you better have a small amount of money needed because it takes a while to build it up. It really Get does. That. Okay. My, yeah, it really does. I, I think my first check was like $35. And it's like, what the heck? <laughs> anyway, that was a stepping stone. That was a building brick for the many things that were to come after that. Mm -hmm. And um, I, the YouTube channel uh, is now almost 26,000 people. Wow. Um, it's yeah, I know. Yeah. And I know so many of these people personally. You know, I just Well, I mean it's amazing. It's, that's kind of your connection to the art center is one of your YouTube followers yes. also teaches with us and, and really that's just right. kind of loved you as a person, as an artist, and really wanted you to share what you have. So great. So keep yeah. going. <laughs> Okay, and that is how my um, my international workshops have come about too. Because somebody in the village said, "Would you ever come to Australia?" And I said, "Yeah, you get twelve people together, and I'm there, you know." And so she did, and I did, and we did, and you know, I've been able to travel in many, many places. There's upcoming workshops, as you know, and all it's unbelievable. So anyway, so YouTube feeds that teaching for me. Mm -hmm. it, te it, it goes hand in hand with that. I spend a lot of time on my comments. I try to respond to every single comment that comes in. And some of my videos have close to 200 uh, comments, you know, and it's just wow. like, I know these people, I recognize their names, you know, some of them have uh, like a nickname for me. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, a relationship with these people so all right so then it's like okay well i'm not really making much money on youtube i know i'll go on patreon mm -hmm. and so youtube fed patreon these people that were getting free content uh, of a video a week were interested in getting an extra video a week with instructions and focal points and things like that so that built up very very quickly for me uh unfortunately my dad moved in and not unfortunately my dad moved in but unfortunately my life changed when my dad moved in in january he requires 24 7 and then cameron passed in february and i had to close patreon i didn't have to close patreon i chose to close patreon and now i'm doing two free content videos a week on youtube it's less pressure for me Mm -hmm. Somehow, I don't know, it's just less. And, uh, but I'm still in touch with those people. We have a chat once a week with the Patreon people, Zoom. I have a chat once a week with the Facebook people on Zoom. You know, show me what you're doing. Set a goal with me. You know, oh, that's what you look like. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's so nurturing and so fulfilling. And, you know, it's just like, they learn to be themselves through art. I'm just the vehicle. I'm just the one that says, I'm okay with that. Right, the title of your workshop is, is totally indicative of that, right? Recovering your art for self. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. And so do you think um, you're gonna continue to make work two videos a week, make work in your studio, teach? I mean, do you have plans for what's next in terms of your work? Do you want to work large on community projects? Who knows? Is there anything that you're thinking? Um, I'm very content with creating two videos a week. Okay. <laughs> I'm very content with uh, responding to all of the comments and I am very content with the workshops that I have coming back up. Now, I will probably teach weekly classes here locally when things are able to, to wake up and do those things again. I will probably do that because uh, I really enjoy that. I enjoy being with the students once a week. It's pretty magical. 
I mean, I'm learning as much as they are. Absolutely learning as much as they are. So uh, I do enjoy having my work published. I've been published uh, in the Somerset magazines more times than I can count. I'm sorry I couldn't get my hands on it. Uh, you, I, it's on my website. That particular magazine is on my website uh, with little images of the book, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy sending my work away <laughs> and okay. let somebody else store it for a little while. <laughs> And I encourage my students to do it too. It's like, if I can send this away, you can send yours away, you know? Mm -hmm. And I have had students that have been published. I've had YouTube followers that have been published because I've been there to kind of push them along and push them along and say, why, why not? What have you got to lose? So they store your piece for six months, you know? You'll get it back and chances are they're gonna snap it up. You're pretty amazing. So, yeah. yeah. Good, but I'm just checking on Facebook real quick to see if we had any more questions. And someone brought up um, your morning, morning book. Maybe you could just, Angie Hay said that. So maybe you could touch on that. I know we, we spoke a little bit about that too. Yeah, we did. Hi, Angie, um, the morning, morning book. Yep, I'm about halfway through with it. And uh, I'll keep you posted on the pages. I can see, I can see my own path through grief. Uh, what started this really was the word grief um, mm -hmm. because people are saying, oh, are you in grief or are you grieving? Da, 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 da. And to me, it, it was a word that <clears throat> encompassed so many joy, sadness, tears, laughter, and darkness, light, you know, it's just like, oh, so I had to look it up. Mm -hmm. Just like I had to look up vocation, actually. <laughs> and uh, I wanted the real meaning of grief. And the real meaning of grief is deep sorrow. Deep sorrow. That's what grief is. And it's like, okay, well, I'm not in deep sorrow all the time. You know, I'm mourning mm -hmm. and I get up at dark o'clock. So it just made sense to do a morning, morning pages. And I'm not a writer, you know, I'm not a journaler in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in script. So Angie, I hope that touched on that for you. Thank you. Yeah. And I think that speaks a lot to your visual language, <laughs> right? I mean, you, you're not a writer, but you're still expressing yourself in each one of these pages every day or every couple of days, right? I mean, it's still you in the work. Yes. Well, fantastic. Lori Marie, do, is there anything that I didn't touch on that you wanted to just let everyone know? I, there are, there's maybe one thing okay. that I want to touch on. And um, like I say, I have the chats that I host uh, once a week. And they are through the different Facebook groups that I have. You can find them through our YouTube village on Facebook. Um, but I want, what I want to say is I always end my chats with a little bit of meditation. And I always start all of my classes with a little bit of meditation. And um, I encourage, I actually have a couple of podcasts out there on YouTube that kind of go over some things like that and self love and self-awareness and um, I just want to convey how important that is you know the time on the table is so precious please allow yourself to have some you know right now with my dad I literally snag five minutes here while he's brushing his teeth five minutes there while you know I'm warming his soup I mean I literally am just grasping what I can and, uh, and I encourage people to say, I have more than enough time to create. So, okay. I think I'm complete. I think that was a beautiful um, kind of end to this talk and for this time, you know, I'm sure there's still plenty of people at home who may have been home for a while and creating work, but it's always nice to hear it again, to, uh, yeah. to spend the time on ourselves and doing what we love. <laughs> yeah okay well thank you so much Lori Marie thank you to everyone who followed us on our Facebook live um, this video will be on our website very soon so if you've got anyone you want to show it to let me know um, appreciate Great. all of your time Lori Marie and oh my pleasure yeah I'm excited to see you in November thank you so much I know it'll be so much fun thank you so much for your time and letting me get to know you and you taking the time to get to know me a little bit better Danielle absolutely thank really you thank it. you yes you're such you're so welcome sweet. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank right. you. All right. Right. The you light in me time. honors the light in you. Ah, Namaste. Beautiful. Namaste. <laughs> All right. Have a great night. You too. Bye.